अब हम गुजारिश करते हैं माननीय उपराष्ट्रपति श्री हामिद अंसारी जी से कि वो हम सबका मार्गदर्शन करने की कृपा करें डॉक्टर अनिल काकोटकर प्रोफेसर वेंकट रामन रामाकृष्णन श्री डी वी सिंह गुलजार रजा साहब चीफ साइंटिस्ट एन आई एस सी आई आर फ्रेंड्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन आई कुड नॉट हैव थॉट ऑफ बिगिनिंग द न्यू ईयर ऑन अ बेटर नोट देन टू पार्टिसिपेट इन अ कॉन्क्लेव लाइक दिस द थीम ऑफ आर डिस्कशन इज साइंटिफिक टेम्पर it is taken for granted yet inadequately explored what do the two terms scientific and temper actually mean any dictionary would tell us the meaning of temper it means a frame of mind or mental disposition the same dictionary tells us that scientific means seeking knowledge through systematic observation and experiment its opposite is unscientific it denotes acquisition of knowledge by means or methods that are scientific thus the simple meaning of scientific temper is a frame of mind that trains itself to seek knowledge by scientific methodology and refrains from acquiring it through other means its emphasis is on process process as well as the product scientific temper means that knowledge based only on authority or legend of superiors elders tradition or convention is insufficient unless it is supported by a rational process of reasoning based on facts scientific temper thus is an attitude which involves application of logic discussion argument and analysis are vital parts of this approach it cannot be authoritarian and must submit to reasoning based on facts and logic it was jawaharlal nehru who introduced the term in our public discourse and i quote him the mere applications of science and technology will not be sufficient condition he wrote adding that what is needed is the scientific approach the adventurous and yet critical temper of science the search for truth and new knowledge the refusal to accept anything without testing and trial the capacity to change previous conclusions in the face of new evidence the reliance on observed fact and not on preconceived theory the hard discipline of the mind all this is necessary not merely for the application of science but for life itself and the solution of its many problems end of quote scientific temper is characterized by traits like a healthy skepticism universalism freedom from prejudice or bias objectivity open mindedness humility willingness to suspend judgment without sufficient evidence rationality perseverance and positive approach to failure a person having scientific attitude uses the method of science in his or her daily normal decision making process one of the objectives of our constitution is to make scientific temper the basis of all social interaction this is spelled out in article 51a and i quote it shall be the duty of every citizen to develop scientific temper humanism and the spirit of inquiry and reform why was this done 
The answer is evident. We live in the age of science. Science has become the most powerful driver of growth and development. No aspect of human life remains untouched by science. The answer to humanity's greatest challenges today, disease, hunger, environmental degradation, climate change, energy requirements, and search for new technologies to overcome them, rest on our better understanding of science. This has practical implications. One, in a competitive economy, there will be much greater demand on the scientific and technological capabilities of the country. We will need more and better innovations in order to remain competitive as we aspire for faster, sustainable, and inclusive growth. Secondly, public acceptance of scientific temper and development of a critical and inquisitive attitude is a precondition for fostering and sustaining the cultivation of innovation and scientific research. And thirdly, we need to create the right ambience and structures to encourage scientific research and innovation. A prerequisite is the need to develop an inquiring attitude and an analytical approach that leads to rational thinking and the pursuit of truth without prejudice. This should be evident to all. In reality, it is not so. Much too often, there is a lack of scientific temper in our daily life. Allow me to cite a few situations. One, in our family life, we do not approve of questioning. Most parents do not like children asking questions. In schools, from nursery to high school, teachers frown upon children raising questions. In colleges and universities, asking questions is often considered cheeky and an attempt by the student to cast doubt on the knowledge of the teacher. Second, the same holds good for social life. It is considered disrespectful to question an elder, a superior, or a leader. Third, this frame of mind is reflected in our attitude to matters of social custom, inherited tradition, and faith. Attempts to separate myth from fact history from mythology, belief from scientifically verified facts are often fried upon. Pursuant to it, the occult is dubbed scientific and superstition as culture. Fourthly, such approaches have often taken unpleasant and violent turn. Books have been burnt or banned, books have been banned or withdrawn from circulation, libraries have been burnt, individual dissenters ostracized or killed, social peace disturbed, and violence inflicted on citizens. Fifth, in each of these cases, the working assumption is that questioning will hurt sentiments, damage or destroy existing order or structures, undermine faith, disrupt social order. Based on these dubious foundations, irrational faiths and beliefs based on unscientific prejudices and habits still persist. There is intolerance of criticism and questioning. It is ironical that the latest information technology tools are used for propagation of anti-science beliefs. It is strange that in an India committed to modernity, we have a large number of faith or tradition-based 
television channels, but none, I repeat none, exclusively devoted to science or science-mindedness. It is also paradoxical that at times even scientists succumb to practices that derogate from scientific temper. These practices raise a question. Can one be scientific and unscientific, rational and irrational, illogical and logical at the same time? It is here that education has to play a critical role. Unfortunately, our educational system is insufficiently equipped to inculcate a scientific temper in young people. Over the years, the quantum of scientific information in the country has increased, but has not brought about science-mindedness in sufficient measure. The use of mass media as a means of transmitting science-related information is perhaps the most important bulwark in our fight against ignorance and irrationality. The media, given its privileged position, has a responsibility to challenge the rampant obscurantism and super superstition that afflicts our society. I am very happy that the Rajya Sabha TV, which has cast itself in the role of a knowledge channel, and the NISCAIR, which has been the business of science communication for the past six decades, have taken this initiative. I hope that the books launched today will help in popularizing science, and the panel discussions, which will follow with the participation of several luminaries will also contribute to this cause. I congratulate all those who have been associated with this endeavor, and I wish them all the very best for the future. Jai Hind.